Annette Funicello was a beloved actress who first captured hearts as one of the original stars of Walt Disney's The Mickey Mouse Club. She became a household name as one of the most popular child performers on the show, and later starred in a series of beach-themed movies starting with 1963's Beach Party. However, in 1987, Annette's life took a tragic turn when she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, a condition that gradually affected her nervous system over the next few decades, eventually leading to her passing in 2013. Annette's journey in showbiz began at a young age. She was born on October 22nd, 1942 in Utica, New York, and her family moved to the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles when she was four. With a natural talent for singing and dancing, she quickly made her way into the entertainment world. By 1955, she was performing in a production of Swan Lake at the Starlight Bowl in Burbank, California, a show produced by none other than Walt Disney himself. Impressed by her talent, Disney invited Annette to audition for a new television show he was developing, which turned out to be the Mickey Mouse Club. Annette's audition left Disney so impressed that she was immediately cast on the show. Her charm and talent quickly made her the most popular of the Mouseketeers, the group of child performers featured on the show. She was only 13 years old when she started, and audiences adored seeing someone their own age perform with such skill and charisma. After her time on the Mickey Mouse Club, Annette continued to enjoy success in her career. She starred in several beach-themed movies, such as Beach Party and its sequels, and even appeared in some Walt Disney feature films like The Shaggy Dog. She was also well-known for her work as a spokesperson for Skippy Peanut Butter. Unfortunately, Annette's thriving career came to an abrupt halt when she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1987. Despite the challenges she faced, Annette fought the disease with strength and grace, dedicating herself to raising awareness and supporting research for future generations. Her courage in the face of adversity remains an inspiration to many. Annette Funicello's legacy as a talented performer and a resilient woman continues to be remembered fondly by those who grew up watching her on screen and admired her determination in the years following her diagnosis. Annette's time on the Mickey Mouse Club showcased her singing and dancing talents. Over the years, she developed a deep respect for Walt Disney and stayed connected with the company even after leaving the show. Annette once mentioned that she saw Walt as a second father and admired his childlike spirit. Although she was already quite talented when she joined the show, Annette found her experience on the Mickey Mouse Club to be a valuable learning opportunity. Unlike many child stars who later reveal negative experiences from their early careers, Annette never spoke poorly of her time on the show that made her famous. Instead, she remained grateful for the opportunities the program provided her. After leaving the Mickey Mouse Club, Annette continued to work with Disney, appearing in various television programs and feature films. Some of these included Zorro and The Nine Lives of El Fago Baca in 1958. Her success on TV eventually led to her starring in feature films, with one of her most memorable roles being in the 1959 comedy The Shaggy Dog. She also appeared in Disney classics like Babes in Toyland, The Misadventures of Merlin Jones, and its sequel The Monkey's Uncle. As as Annette's career with Disney progressed, she decided to expand her horizons and take on roles aimed at an older audience. In 1963, she starred in Beach Party alongside Frankie Avalon. The film was a major hit, helping Annette break out of the Disney mold. The success of Beach Party led to several sequels, all of which Annette reprised her role for. In fact, both Annette and Frankie returned to the series two decades later for a playful parody in the 1980s. The Beach Party sequels included Muscle Beach Party, Bikini Beach, Beach Blanket Bingo, and How to Stuff a Wild Bikini. These films made Annette a favorite among teen audiences, and she capitalized on her popularity by launching a career as a pop singer. During this time, she released several successful singles that made it into the top 40. Annette Funicello, the beloved star known for hits like Pineapple Princess, How Will I Know My Love, and Tall Paul, saw her career slow down after the success of her beach movies. However, she returned to that sunny setting alongside Frankie Avalon in the 1987 film Back to the Beach. This Paramount release featured Annette and Frankie as parents of teenagers who were eager to enjoy the same kind of fun they had back in the 1960s. Following the movie, Annette and Frankie took a nostalgia-filled concert tour, performing many of the songs from their iconic beach films. The tour aimed to tap into the memories of their now older fans and turned out to be a modest success. Unfortunately, shortly after the tour ended, Annette shared some heartbreaking news with her fans. 
Despite the recent success of the tour, she decided it was time to open up about a struggle she had been dealing with for years. In 1987, Annette was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, MS, a battle she had been keeping private. By 1992, she felt she could no longer hide her illness from the public. Once she revealed her diagnosis, Annette dedicated herself to fighting the disease. She not only focused on managing her symptoms, but also began raising funds for research to help future generations. In 1993, a year after making her diagnosis public, Annette founded the Annette Funicello Research Fund for Neurological Disorders. Alongside this, she also launched the Annette Funicello Teddy Bear Company, which produced a line of collectible bears. A significant portion of the proceeds from these bears went directly to her research fund. Annette also introduced her own perfume, Cello by Annette, with sales supporting neurological research as well. Despite all her efforts, Annette's health gradually declined due to MS. Her second husband, husband, Glenn Holt, whom she married in 1986, just a year before her diagnosis, was by her side throughout her fight. Annette had previously been married to Jack Gillardi, with whom she had three children. In her later years, Annette lived in the San Fernando Valley with Glenn, the same area where she had spent her childhood. She was 50 years old when she publicly announced her battle with MS, and as time went on, she began to lose her mobility. Initially, she used a cane, but eventually she had to rely on a wheelchair. When she could no longer speak, Annette Annette decided it was time to step away from the public eye. Throughout her journey, Annette tried various groundbreaking treatments to combat MS. These included having electrodes implanted in her brain to control her tremors and taking an experimental drug that unfortunately landed her in the hospital for a week. Despite the lack of success with these treatments, Annette remained hopeful that one day a cure for MS would be found. We'd love to hear from you. Share your favorite memories of Annette Funicello in the comments below. And before you head out, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Be sure to click the bell icon so you never miss out on our latest videos. Thanks for watching.